if you ever have heard that sound on uh, HF, it's uh, Hellschreiber. And uh, Stephen BLQ and myself, Peter, to TPM, uh, have been doing some QRP experiments with Hellschreiber recently. Um, and uh, what kind of got me interested in it was uh, that I, I'm, although I've failed to learn Morse code so far, I, uh, I'm very interested in the, um, in, uh, the low power uh, CW transceivers you can build. And one of them I built, or actually I didn't build it, I bought it, but um, is a CRK10. I don't know if you've seen these. A Chinese guy um, and a wonderful little device, cute gadget. But uh, because I don't have Morse code at the moment, uh, I was interested in modes that could be used, digital modes that could be used, keying it on and off. And one such mode is, uh, is Hellschreiber. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about what Hellschreiber is, uh, how it works, uh, really interesting history and uh, really ingenious uh, device in its time, 1920s. Um, I've also built a little transmitter here, which uh, you can hear on Stephen's receiver over there. And we've had a couple of goes with different, different arrangements, and we'll talk through uh, both sides of that uh, today. Um, I've also been mucking around with uh, audio keying circuits. So if you're running software on a laptop, you get um, a tone coming out of it, and you need to key the transmitter with that. So we've been both mucking around with uh, ways to do that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about software, and we'll do a demo, which we've sort of done already. So um, Hellschreiber is a facsimile style uh, transmission and it uses a, a, a group of uh, pixels. Um, it was invented by Rudolf Held late 1920s. He patented it in, in uh, 1929 and it has been used uh, by the press right up until I think uh, the 1980s. So it's a really long-term uh, solution and one of the reasons is it's incredibly simple hardware. The, uh, the receiver can be made with uh, two moving parts and uh, the transmitter is also quite simple. Uh, so Newswise apparently used it until quite recently um, and it will run, as well as running over radio, it was, it was used to be running over um, just telephone links, particularly field telephones during the war. So it uses a 7x7 seven seven pixel matrix but in fact um, the the vertical pixels are actually uh, double that, and uh, he came up with a scheme where he, he uses 14 pixels, but he designed the font so that there was never one single pixel on at a time in order to reduce bandwidth. It's all on off, so it's equivalent of 112.5 board, and it prints using a very simple system. It's a spiral wheel, um, which I guess picks up ink somehow. And apparently the way they used to do it was that they would have a, a hammer behind the paper that when it received a carrier would bang the paper up against the spiral wheel. Now the spiral has got two lines on it and uh, the idea is that you get the letters twice and this is important because sometimes uh, the synchronization between the receiver and the transmitter might be out a bit so you'll get the text drifting up or down. We don't find that to be a problem with computers, the modern ones, but I notice this little Arduino is a little bit, does drift a little bit, so it's still handy to have it printed twice. So the, uh, the fonts are designed, as I said, they're actually uh, two pixels vertically and they scan from the bottom up. They whiz up and you see how he's designed the font, even though they are two pixels, there's never a case where there's one on its own, there's always two together. So we have a look at how one bit of it is transmitted. You'll see carrier comes on, so this is like a column B there, a column C there, transmits and down again, the other end. Uh, this is how my one works. My one looks on the crow, not, not quite as nicely smooth. I've got a little bit of low pass filtering, but not very much, not enough in there. Uh, and uh, the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to be rather like PSK, where it's, I forget what they call it, a, uh, a cosine curve. Um, I forget what you call that, but the envelope of the um, CW. Now, the way it's actually transmitted is um, they have a drum, and the drum has raised pieces of metal around it, one ring for each letter. And so basically you pressed a key on the keyboard and something would scan up and down the drum to the position and then it would just, as it whizzed around, it would pick off the, the ons and offs for that character. So very simple on both the reception side in particular and on the transmit side. 
The, um, the first transmitter I used was this one, the, um, the CRK10, and it has a Kia in it. It's got a CW Kia, quite an intelligent little um, pick-based Kia, and that lets you store things and all that sort of stuff. I tried keying that, but I could not get that to work. I think a couple of reasons, but most likely I needed a shorter, you know, to be able to, to key a lot shorter than you would for Morse code. So I did uh, add an extra socket into it, and I was able to key the transmitter, and that worked pretty well. Um, but I had to build uh, an audio keyer. Now I just did a very simple, uh, it's just a full wave rectifier after an audio transformer. And um, I, I did play around a little bit with capacitor values just to get the time constants right. And this just pulls the, pulls the key down on the transmitter. And that works fine for me. Um, so here you see it in operation. Uh, I was using an external USB uh, audio uh, device at that point. And uh, Stephen was able, oh, well firstly, here's me transmitting just locally. So you can see the speed of it, it's quite a low, I think it's 25 words a minute basically equivalent, so it's pretty slow. And I'm not putting, this is a 3 watt transmitter. Um, Hellschreiber is about 25% duty cycle, quite a low duty cycle, so I'm probably I'm putting out a pretty good 3 watt signal there. And this is just with the audio key. And uh, here's how uh, Stephen to BLQ received me at the other end, so quite good. This is with three watts, three watts. And, um, and that was pretty good. Uh, he's 10 kilometres away, so uh, we've got a reasonable path between the two of us. Uh, we're using 7030, um, which I think is just because, well, I bought a yep. 7030 version of this, but then since then we've both got crystals on 7030, so we've kind of yeah. been using it. I'm not sure if there's an official, I suppose there is a digital frequency um, that we should be using. Um, that course is bad. It depends on the gentleman's agreement. The, um, there is a bit of Morse on 7030. Oh, yes, the uh, QRP uses it. It's an international QRP frequency. And uh, on off keying is uh, permitted down there, and that's, uh, that's Hellschreiber. Yeah. There has been a move federally to, uh, I think they actually specify the frequencies for about 7, seven one. 7 or somewhere up there. Oh, really? Can't remember. Quite up high, yeah. Might be in the latest call books, actually. Yeah. We haven't had any complaints that I've heard so far, but I may no, not well, understand. There's, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, packet and uh, uh, IPRS around. Yes. Uh, it's just a fraction higher than that, yes. What is it? 738, 740? Yeah. Yeah, 38. What's three whisper eight, on? Whispers, around. yeah, up there, yeah. Um, so I thought I'd build something separate to, to this box, and uh, so I, I kind of focused in on the Pixie design. Pixie is a clever circuit that uses um, Colpitt's oscillator, and then there's the transmitter, the, the output transistor serves two purposes. When the key is down, uh, then it, uh, it transmits, but it's also in receive mode, it's used as the mixer. And I've only just built the transmit side of it here, but if you search around for Pixie and Pixie 2, there's a ton of articles and different versions. It's a really interesting design. There's lots of different ones around. So uh, here's mine, which is just sitting down here at the moment. Um, for test purposes initially, what I did was I just ran a, uh, just a digital audio recorder, which I just had a, this is VK2 TPM testing. Uh, and that's what I was using now. Uh, with this one, it's very low power. The, the output transistor is a 2N2222, and uh, so it's not putting out very much. It must be milliwatts. Mm. But uh, even so, uh, Stephen uh, is able to pick me up, sort of. Yeah. That wasn't, uh, wasn't great on that one. Still, still a little in the noise, as you can see. The, um, the background white is sort of like mid-grey, but the, you can still see the black characters from the... Um, the signal. Yeah, Hellschreiber is what they call a fuzzy digital mode, and the reason is that uh, it's not designed for decoding by computers. It's designed for your senses, your eyes, and and because you get familiar with the font, you can kind of pick it out of the noise a lot more easily than a computer could decode it. So even though things can be pretty dodgy, in that I would, I don't think you could probably read that unless you knew it was a test transmission. So Stephen's receiver, which is down here on the desk, is, which. Um, Perhaps you should talk about that. Oh, uh, it's done with. Um, I'm going to come back to okay. some more, but um, do okay, you want to talk well, about? We'll um, digress a little to uh, my transceiver, and I'll just pull the bolts out so I don't split something. Um, 
I tr every time I'm building something, I, I try to do, um, learn something more, try a different uh, construction technique. So front panel is masonite pol polished with boot polish. Um, the LED is uh, RF output. I'll, when we fire it up, um, I'll show you. But it's um, inductive coupled with the RF on the output, so it's uh, just an RF indicator. Um, the chassis is angle aluminium, just pop riveted together. I wasn't going to waste a lot of money on uh, messing up aluminium, so if I have to reuse it, it's not, a, not wasted. The um, audio interface, Pity's used a, a bridge rectifier. I used a voltage doubler. It produces a, a little more um, volts output from the, um, to key the transmitter. I've got uh, two, one of the left channel from the computer does the actual keying. The right channel is user selectable in the software to tr uh, select the transmit receive mode. So I use that to uh, change the um, oscillator in the transmitter for the uh, receiver offset. And the third one is um, isolation to feed back to the laptop for decoding. The receiver was just a module I built a, a while back as a test receiver. Uh, so it's, it's just any 602 and an audio amp, nothing special in there. And uh, the transmitter is not much more than uh, the CRK10 circuit. The um, output transistors are BD139 because I had those from the, in the junk box. And the crystals, when um, Nick Hacko was selling the Genesis kit, you could also buy a batch of crystals. Um, and I got 7030 kilohertz, and uh, I just bought 10 of them because they were really dirt cheap. But I don't think uh, Nick actually does that anymore. He probably found it was really hard work to run a kit company. Um, so there's uh, two crystals as the bandpass filter in the receiver, and that gives, I think, uh, almost a kilohertz bandwidth, depending on the signal strength. But uh, the third crystal is in the oscillator of the, the transmitter. Um, some other stage I'll talk about the um, SDR receiver, we'll go back to the um, Hellschreiber because that's the uh, main thing we're doing here. And on the um, uh, Drew Diamond meter of power, <laughs> it's um, two, I think 0.2 milliamps is about a half a watt. Um, this is just the same as what's in this book. Fire it up. I, I can certainly transmit from mine, but I don't think Peter can receive No, it. not at the moment, no. no. Okay, so uh, here's how I heard Stephen. Mm -hmm. So we seem to be missing a few pixels here and there, but um, mm -hmm. good signal uh, into my place. Uh, my audio levels here are way too high. I had a problem with um, my audio coming into the computer and uh, FL Digi, you can adjust audio to some extent, but I couldn't get it down low enough here but uh, perfectly readable signal uh, at my place. Um, there's a couple of different uh, variants. Um, CMT, can, oh, Feld held. Feld is kind of a, um, it's, it apparently comes from field. Field, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it was, when they were used uh, during the war, they were field transmitters and they, uh, field devices, and they were, they were actually plugged in, they had a 900 hertz tone coming out of them, and they we plugged into field telephones. So uh, the Feld, I don't know, today it seems to be associated with on-off keying, but there's some other variants. There's a concurrent multi-tone where the whole row of dots is sent on different tones all at once, and there's another one which is sequential multi-tone where the dots are sent one at a time, but on different frequencies, and both of these can counteract uh, certain kinds of common interference, because obviously if it's an on-off system, then it it's, um, uh, can be messed up just by pulse noise and so on. Uh, so th the other ones, I believe, also um, concurrent multi-tone uh, can be run at different speeds, and, and it doesn't matter. Apparently, they somehow synchronise, so they can turn down the speed if, if conditions are very poor. Um, to get going with it, there's quite a lot of software around. Uh, we tend to use um, FL Digi, and FL Digi is on all platforms. It's fantastic. Uh, lots of different Windows software supports uh, Feld Hellschreiber, so different Hellschreiber models uh, types. Uh, on the Mac, there's Coco Modem, and um, interestingly, uh, I, I was looking. At, I was, as I said, I was using uh, just a digital audio recorder as a test transmitter. But I noticed that um, Mark Vanderwedding, who has a fantastic Brainwagon blog, does lots of interesting little projects, and he wrote a um, 
uh, a Kia for the Arduino, and uh, that's what I'm running here on the bench. Um, and he published the source code. It's very simple. It's basically a giant table with all of the pixels for each each uh, letter, and then it's just a very s simple loop that just loops through the table, picking out all the bits and sending them with a time delay on them. And um, this is how Stephen receives my uh, transmission. That actually works a lot better than the audio keying, I think because the keying is more solid than with the audio keying. Uh, notice a slight drift here, so the crystal and timing on the Arduino is slightly out compared to your computer at the other end. Um, but still it's close enough and, and um, uh, it works pretty well. Um, so that, they're great if you've got an Arduino lying around and you just want a test transmitter. I think Mark used, said he was using it for a weather station or something, so he was transmitting the temperature and air pressure and things back to his house. Uh, there's a bunch of references around. Um, QSL.net's got quite a good document there and, and the spec, if you search around, there's a, uh, there's a PDF that has the full spec and uh, you know the definition. Wikipedia's got some stuff. Um, and uh, so if you hear that sound, oh, do you want to turn it up? I think I'm transmitting. So this is the Arduino. See, I unclip it, it stops. And uh, pin 13, which is the pin that has an LED on the board, is keyed uh, on when um, high, when it's transmitting. And I've just got a little transistor there that is turned on and that pulls the Pixie 2 final to earth and uh, keys it. So you can hear a fair bit of carrier coming through in the background. The oscillator keeps running all the way through, but that's fine for this. Um, that's good. So if you hear that sound, please do call us back.